RCS messaging isn't the silver bullet for cross-platform communications that it probably ought to be, but it is a start, especially for iPhone heavy regions where messaging can be a little bit of an ordeal. What can you do that you couldn't before with RCS between Android and iPhone though? Well, here's everything you need to know. There probably isn't gonna be a cure for the embarrassing stigma surrounding the green bubble, which is sticking around with Android to iOS communications. Even so, at least in the not too distant future, being a second class citizen, at least when it comes to messaging, is hopefully gonna be a thing of the past. Apple can keep their bloat bundled in with iMessage. Who needs games, unnecessary apps, and weird extras that you'll never use? Well, modern solutions for modern messaging are more than enough for us. Here's some good news about RCS on iPhone though. You don't need to have iMessage active for RCS to work as it's intended. It's unlikely that someone using an iPhone won't use iMessage, but that's one less thing to worry about. However, RCS does need to be supported by the carrier that the iPhone is using before it will work. And one more thing, RCS is enabled by default in iOS 18, but like Android, it can be disabled through Google Messages. To check on Android, just go to Google Messages, hit your profile icon, message settings, RCS chats, and turn on RCS chats if it's not already enabled. Your cell phone number will show a connected status to indicate things are working as intended on your Android phone. It's a little bit different on your iPhone though. If your carrier does support RCS, you can check by heading to settings, apps, messages, RCS messaging, which is found under the text messaging section. You'll know things are working as intended as the text entry field will show text, message, and RCS. So getting into this, I think SMS is annoying because there is simply no way of accurately knowing if your message has actually reached its final destination after it's sent. Delivery indicators or notifications with RCS messaging though, give you a real-time update on the status of your messages, including when they were sent, when they were delivered, and when they were read. This can be helpful for ensuring that your messages are reaching their intended recipients and for troubleshooting any delivery issues. It's also a quick way to test if your connection is working as it should be. So when you send a message using Google Messages, you'll get a single tick or check mark that your message has been sent. A double tick or check mark will indicate that your message has been delivered to the person, the contact, or the group that you're part of. On iOS, it's a little bit different. So instead of a check mark, it's a simple delivered text label under the message. Read receipts go a step further by providing a clear indication of whether your message has been delivered and then read. And this can be helpful for knowing if someone has seen your message and is ignoring it, or if there might be a technical issue preventing them from receiving it. For example, if you send an important message and don't receive a read receipt, you might wanna follow up with the person or the person who's received it and why they haven't responded to it yet. On iOS, read receipts show a text label showing read and the time when the message was opened and read by the person. Android uses a color filled double tick or check mark to confirm that a message has been opened and read. Read receipts can also be considered pretty intrusive and can make some people feel pressured into responding to you quickly. If you prefer not to be notified when your messages are read or you don't want anyone else to see them, you can disable read receipts in your settings. By default, these are active on Android and iOS though. To change on Android, just go to settings, messages, advanced, read receipts and toggle the switch to enable or disable as you need it. On iOS, you can go to settings, apps, messages, and send read receipts. Toggle that as you need it to be toggled. With RCS enabled, we're not only finally able to see when iPhone contacts are typing a message, they can actually see when you're typing a message on your Android phone as well. It's a great two-way street that just keeps on giving. Typing indicators, they're old hat. They've been around for about 20 years now in lots of IM services and probably longer across the internet, but getting them across barriers is another big bonus when contacting your friends, your relatives, coworkers, or anyone else for that matter. At the moment though, there is no way to disable typing indicators when using RCS, and hopefully it will come later down the line. It also isn't perfect in the iPhone to Android direction. Sometimes you won't see typing indicators until a message has already been received, then subsequent indicators are gonna be visible to you. Android typing indicators, for what it's worth, are almost always visible on iOS. So it works a little bit better in that direction than it does in the other direction. Another major change is the long awaited ability to send high resolution photos and videos. So before RCS, photos and videos would be sent using MMS. And this older tech compresses the content to fit within the network size constraints set by your character. Because RCS uses Wi-Fi and cellular data, it means you can send much larger images and videos. At the moment, it seems that limit is 100 megabytes. 
That should be more than enough for even the biggest of photos, but less impressive for things like 4K video files. If you do send longer videos, they will be slightly compressed, but they will look way better than before. They shouldn't be anywhere near as much pixelation, and I think that is a good thing. There is a few ways to improve the default quality on Android though. Firstly, by heading to settings in Google Messages and then send photos faster and toggling this off. On iPhone, just go to settings, messages, low quality image mode and make sure that this is toggled off. And that should mean better images sent across the barriers. One of the neatest little benefits of larger file limits when using RCS between Android and iPhone though is that because you can send zip files, it means you can do things like zip up your documents and zip up more photos and videos and send them in one instant rather than having to send them individually in little groups. I think it's a super smooth way to share lots of things at once. If you use Google Messages or Apple Messages on a desktop as well, you can drag and drop from your PC to share directly from your chats, making it super simple to get things off your computer and onto your phone. So sometimes the quickest way to let someone know that their message has been understood or received is to send an emoji or even better, a message reaction. The function has been around for a while with some impressive workarounds by Google to allow it to work at all, but with RCS between iPhone and Android, we now have fully working message reactions. So in essence, this just lets you use an emoji or in some cases stickers on specific incoming messages, images, videos, or files. On iPhone, it doesn't work quite as well as it does on Android, so that's on Apple. That said, the person will get a notification to indicate what emoji you've reacted with. We're not saying that you should spam your friends on iPhone, but well, you could if you wanted to. Finally, finally, finally though, RCS brings workable and less problematic group chats to Android and iPhone. For years, this has been one of the most frustrating experiences for everyone concerned when placed into a mixed user group group chat. Like all of the features, this is limited though because it relies on your iPhone using friends to update their phones to iOS 18. And also on top of that, that their carrier supports RCS as well. Your group chat might not even instantly switch over to this new communication standard if these prerequisites are met anyway. So as long as everyone is updated and things are working as they should in one-to-one -one chats, your group chat should switch over. All of the other functions that we've mentioned should be available right from the get-go, but Android folks will still appear as green bubbles, as I noted. One of the final things we need to know is that yes, just because RCS has arrived on iPhone, it doesn't mean you'll lose out on SMS functionality between Android devices and Apple devices. Unlimited SMS plans are pretty common nowadays, but if you do have a limited plan, it's worth noting that RCS messaging won't affect that limit. So if you do want to keep that limit high, not use some of your allowance, then RCS might be the way to go. You can also still continue using MMS and SMS if you really wanted to. Just know that you'll miss out on that updated feature set and it will be basic messaging back to the drawing board as it is. Luckily, we do know of one feature that is definitely coming. So for now, when you message your friends using Android and Google Messages, the communication is fully encrypted. At least right now, though, there is no encryption for Android to iPhone RCS messaging and vice versa. Google, though, has confirmed that they're working on implementing end-to-end -end encryption, but for now, it is still limited to your Android-only contacts using Google Messages, and you can see this in group chats and the like by tapping the settings section and looking at the status of your direct contact information. When encryption does arrive, it does mean that messages between devices should be more secure. At present, RCFs between Android and iPhone is about as secure as when using that widely outdated SMS, which offers zero encryption of any form. So if you are worried about security and anything else, use a different application. So that's all of the things you can currently do and maybe one thing that's coming later down the line with RCS between iPhone and Android and Android and iPhone. As we all know, RCS is a much needed leap in basic chat-based communication for our smartphones, at least by 2024 standards. On Android, we've enjoyed the ability to text each other with fewer limits and constraints and even feature creep quite a few years now. Google Messages is really starting to become quite a robust messaging client that I think has lots of cool stuff that you won't find everywhere else and actually offers utility. One of the best things though about Apple's decision to integrate RCS is that the base experience between iPhone and Android has had that much needed level up. RCS is quietly better than a lot of the AI features that Apple announced as part of their Apple intelligence suite, if you ask me. The downside is that the green bubble stigma is probably gonna persist, sadly, rightly or wrongly. You will need to also convince your contacts if they haven't done so already to update to iOS 18 if they haven't done so and there are obviously people online uh, who are petty enough to keep RCS disabled for reasons we simply can't understand. They just, they just want to see the world burn. 
Despite some NVMOs also using networks that do support RTS out of the box, they can't use the functionality just yet. There's only a few that actually works with. We do hope that changes over time, but until then, they can always get an Android phone, right?